ಜನಾಗಲಿತಾ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತಾಂಶ ನಮಃ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತರೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣಿ ನಿರೀಶೇಷು ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೀಕ್ಷಿತಾರಿಣಿ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವಧಾನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮಿತಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮಿನಿ ಗೌರ್ತಿಶ ನಮಃ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತಿ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಭಕ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ಋಷಭಾನು ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಕಣಿ ಹೇಳಿ ವಾಂಛಾಕಲ್ಪಿತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅಕ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಷಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ಜಾಯ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಕಶನ್ ಆನ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ವಿಲ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ನೈನ್ತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ನಂಬರ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡನ್ ಹಾಫ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ okay so before we start we will do some revision for the ninth chapter so eighth chapter ended with the description about the yog mishra bhakti ninth chapter lord is explaining about the guhyatam knowledge so some devotees can revise uh, what we discussed in the beginning of ninth chapter why lord is speaking this chapter what is there in this chapter Someone would you like to share? Yeah. ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕುಛ ಬೋಲ್ ರೇ ಕ್ಯಾ ಮುಜೆ ಆವಾಜ್ ನೀ ಆ ರೇ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಹಿಯರ್ ಆ ಕೇಶರ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಬೋಲ್ ಒನ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಹಲೋ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬೋಲ್ ಯಾ ಪ್ರಭುಜಿ ಯು ಮೆನ್ಶನ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಗುಹ್ಯ ಗುಹ್ಯತರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗುಹ್ಯತಮ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ಮೆನ್ಶನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಷನರ್ ಆಫ್ ಉತ್ತಮ ಭಕ್ತ ಲೈಕ್ ಶುದ್ಧ ಭಕ್ತ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ವಭಾವ ನಾಟ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಟೂ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಯು ಮೆನ್ಶನ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಒನ್ you told uh, two lines bro ji yeah, but that was very like here and there one point you told from the explanation one from the beginning of chapter i am asking what we explained we discussed about guhya guhyatar and guhyatam so can you tell or somebody can tell about these three what are they guhya what is guhya knowledge what is guhyatar what is guhyatam mera bhakti leela mat ji ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಭುಜಿ ಗುಹ್ಯ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ಫಿಡೆನ್ಶಿಯಲ್ ದೆನ್ ಗುಹ್ಯ ತರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಮೋರ್ ಕಾನ್ಫಿಡೆನ್ಶಿಯಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಫಿಡೆನ್ಶಿಯಲ್ ಗುಹ್ಯ ತಮ ಸೊ ಯು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ದಟ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಗುಹ್ಯ ತರ ದೇರ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ದ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಸೋಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ದೆನ್ ಗುಹ್ಯ ತರ್ ದಟ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಏಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ explain the gyana aspect jiva shakti lord's energies jiva shakti bahiranga shakti yeah, and that, um, uh, parmatma aspect then yeah. guhyatama uh, this uh, vigyans realization explains in 9 and 10 that is the chitta shakti of the lord and this include uh, spiritual energy of the lord like personal beauties and form mm, correct yes. yeah thank you mother yeah so somebody can tell about uh, the explanation of 9.1 what we discussed what it was told in the purport some points now ganga putra 
want to share shirdan bhai you want to share Uh, yes, Rajesh. <clears throat> Actually, I wanted to share the same points which Mataji has already explained. Oh, okay, okay. So you can And, share something uh, from Parpat then, yeah. Yeah. In nine point one, uh, like uh, Krishna is telling because uh, this Arjuna is uh, the qualifications we were discussing. First and uh -huh. second yes, uh, yes, two yes. shlokas yeah. are like uh, qualifications of it. <clears throat> Here are like right. Arjuna is uh, non-envious. That mm -hmm. was the one main point we were. Highlighting in that first shloka of this nine point one. Hmm. What is the word Krishna uses for that? Anasuya. Uh, Anasuya. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, please. So Krishna is telling, I will explain Jnana and Vijnana both. Okay. Yeah. From yeah. the purport, yeah, some things you can share. We discussed some examples and so. ओके जय श्री राधा मती uh in the ninth chapter uh, we discuss that bhakti yoga is uh, superior than uh, karma yoga and gyan yoga and other process uh, other process so bhakti yoga is uh, pradhan bhuti pradhan bhuti राजगोहम से पवित्र थर्ड फोर्थ वॉज उत्तम फिफ्थ वॉज प्रत्यक्ष सिक्स वॉज धर्म्यम सेवेंथ वॉज सुसुखम एट्थ वॉज अवेम सो वन वन डी वॉट यू कैन टेल अबाउट ईच आस्पेक्ट वॉट वी डिस्कस्ड वॉट प्रोपाद राइट्स इन द पर्पट वाई प्रोपाद कॉल्ड इट एज राज विद्या किंग ऑफ नॉलेज वी लाइक टू शेयर अबाउट द सेकेंड वर्स Anuradha Mathe ji, you were there last class. Pranav Mathe ji also, you were also there, I think, last class. Want to share second verse? Oh, sorry, Prabhu, I missed the last part of the session. Oh, last session, fully you were not there. Uh, um, last fifteen minutes, I have missed. No, we discussed before that. Last fifteen minutes, we were discussing third verse. Raj Vidya, Raj Goyam, we discussed in between only. Check Sorry. maybe check your notes maybe okay um who else are there Anuradha Mathe you want to share or Prasanna Gopal Pooh okay Bhakti Lila Mathe you are raised down uh Prabhu ji here uh, you explain the eight aspect of the pure devotional service. That is, uh, uh, Raj Vidya, Raj Guhyam, Pavitram, Susukham, Avyamam. Where uh, you said Raj Vidya means, Prabhupada explain here the activity of the spirit soul, and uh, you also gave the example of that parrot and cage wala, mm -hmm. old lady, old ladies, and uh, that uh, parrot in the cage, and oh. uh, um, from that example you explain the act, uh, how the spirit soul is important. not the covering of the body and also one point um, is i like that uh, uh, that uh, specific word um, purifying potency yes purifying potency so that uh, question you explain uh, how the devotion has the potency to remove all kinds of karma and the, and their effect there you explain the cycle of Uh, I don't remember that specific shloka, but that cycle is a uh, prarabdha, kutam, bijam, pap, uh, phalon mukham, uh, yeah. where a small uh, actually a plant seed, then plants, then a tree, then flower, and uh, that bears the fruits. Mm. 
Yes. Yeah, we discussed it. that proper rights in the purport example. Okay. Then each word you take pratyaksha abhagamam, then su sukham, everlasting. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, on purpose, purpose, we discussed one. Okay. Thank you, Nathan. Okay, we'll go to third verse. We had started discussing. Third one, Shadadhana Purusha, Dharmasya Se Parantapa, Aprape Mam Nivartante, Mrityu Samsara Vartmai. So, this we had started discussing that uh, those who are not qualified for devotional service, those who don't have faith, means uh, they are envious of the Lord. So, for them, it is said, those who are not faithful in the devotional service cannot attain me, O conqueror of enemies. Therefore, they return to the path of birth and death in this material world. Yeah. So, in this we were discussing that the faithless cannot accomplish this process of devotional service. That is purport of this verse. Yeah. Prabhupada was explaining that how the faith is categorized. And Prabhupada was saying that how this faith is most important aspect in the devotional service. See this fourth line Prabhupada is saying. Thus faith is most important factor. Yeah, for the progress in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, and we discussed as one grows in bhakti, the faith increases. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we'll continue this purport. So, yeah. From here we will read. Okay, Jay Shri Radha Mataji, would you like to read? Um, and in the second class are those who are not very advanced in the understanding, uh, understanding the devotional scriptures, but who automatically have firm faith that Krishna Bhakti or service to Krishna is the best cause and so in good faith have taken it up. Thus, they are superior to the third class who have neither perfect knowledge of the scriptures nor good faith, but uh, by association and simplicity are trying to follow. The third class person in Krishna consciousness have fall, fall down, but when one is in the second class, he does not fall down. And for the first class person in Krishna consciousness, there is no chance of falling down. One in the first class will surely make progress and achieve the result at the end. Hmm. So three divisions Prabhupada mentioned here. So from here he started. Yes. It is hmm. only by faith that one can advance in Krishna consciousness. As far as the de uh, development of faith in concern, one who is well versed in the literatures of devotional service and has attained the stage uh, of firm faith is called a first class person in Krishna consciousness. Yes, thank you. Mantri. So here first class person means this is basically called as Uttama Adhikari. By Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamri Sindhu, we will read. This is Uttama Adhikari. This first. So what are the characteristics? So, so, consideration is based on faith. Okay, one who is well versed in the literatures of devotional service. This is first aspect. Okay. And then second aspect is who has attained the stage of firm faith. Okay. So, if we, when we want to identify any person, which state he is in, which level he is in, whether he is Uttama Adhikari, Madhyama Adhikari or Anishtha Adhikari, we have to identify by these factors. So two factors are told. Who is well versed in the literatures of devotional service. Means he should have read the Bhakti Shastras. 
the literatures left by Shri Prabhupada and the previous Acharyas. And he should speak based on those literatures. Okay, that is first factor. Second is he has attained the stage of firm faith. Okay, his faith should be firm. This is second. Okay, and what is that firm faith? Shraddha Sabde Vishwaskaya Sudrid Nishchay Krishna Bhakti Kaila Sarva Karma Krita Hai. Okay, so these two aspects are mentioned as the Uttam Adhikari's qualification. Okay. Yeah. And then the second class is explained here. So what is the Sanskrit term for that? Madhyama Adhikari. This Prabhupada explains in the NOI also, an act of instruction there also you will read. And also explaining Bhakti Samri Sindhi. The second class are those who are not very advanced. So first factor is they are not very advanced in understanding the devotional scriptures. Means they have read it but not all. And in what they have read, they have also not got full understanding of that. Okay. So as we read once, twice, thrice, we get better and better understanding. Correct. But what is their good qualification? B is that who automatically have firm faith. They have firm faith and Uttamadikari also have firm faith. But what is the difference? This A is different point. Okay. The Madhyamadikari is not as, as, as good in understanding the scriptures as Madhyamadikari. Okay. As Uttamadikari, sorry. So Uttamadikari has very good understanding of scriptures as well as faith. Okay. But Madhyamadikari, he doesn't have knowledge of scriptures. This factor is lacking. But faith is there. Okay. And similarly, as we saw here, Uttamadikari, so A was the knowledge of scriptures. This is there. And here, the firm faith is also there. So that is Uttamadikari characteristic. Mm -hmm. Here also he has firm faith. Okay, so they are superior, the Madhyamadikari is superior to third class. So what is the third class? That is Kanishtha. Adhikari. So he is also Adhikari. Means he he has the Adhikar for Bhakti. But what are the characteristics? Who have neither perfect knowledge of the scriptures and nor good faith. Okay. Knowledge of scriptures is not there. And B the firm faith is also not there. But by association and simplicity are trying to follow. There are some simple faith. Oh, yes, Bhagavad Gita is good. This Srimad Bhagavatam is good. These temples are good. Krishna is God. They have some faith. But that faith is not based on scriptures, knowledge of scriptures. If you ask them why Krishna is God, they cannot explain. Why Bhagavad Gita is good, they cannot explain. Okay. But they have some faith that is coming from maybe past life hmm. or family culture. Yeah. So, this Kanishtadikari person in Krishna consciousness may fall down. Okay, He can go away. But when one is in the second class, he does not fall down. Means Madhyamadikari or Uttamadikari. For the first class person in Krishna consciousness, there is no chance of falling down. Okay, so that is the difference. So, we can also take lessons from here that when we understand the scriptures, we should have knowledge of scriptures. So that by that knowledge of scriptures, what happens? Our faith increases actually. Okay. So initially there is Agya Sukriti by which, by which one gets some faith to start Bhakti. But after one comes into Bhakti, when one gains more and more knowledge, understanding the different aspects of Krishna, how Krishna is the son of Yashoda, how Krishna is also acting in different rasas, how Krishna is a Supreme Personality of Godhead and has three features. Brahman, then there is Paramatma, then there is Bhagwan, 
these three features and knowing details about more about Bhagwan feature. Okay, what are his pastimes in various avatars? Which are his avatars? So all these details, these are not the gyan like uh, the gyanis impersonalist. This is knowledge regarding the bhakti aspects of Bhagwan. So when that knowledge increases, then the faith also increases. So in our devotees community also, we should try to increase the study of Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, so that the knowledge of scriptures can increase among us. And then by that, our faith will also increase. And as faith increases, one can go from Kanishta to Madhyama and then Uttama, Adhikari. And then what will happen? So there will be no chance of falling down. Okay, so we can see when Prabhupada preached to hippies, it's not that everybody continued. Many people left also. So Prabhupada had more than 6,000 disciples. But how many are remaining now? Very few are remaining. Okay, so we can see that there were many Kanishtha Adhikaris also who had some faith. There were many second class devotees also who may be continuing. And now there are also very, very advanced Uttama Adhikari disciples of Prabhupada who are very strongly connected to Srila Prabhupada still and they are preaching. Okay, so we can see in Prabhupada's preaching itself that he created different levels of devotees. Hmm. So on the first class, oh sorry, one in the first class will surely make progress. So if we want to surely make progress, then what are the two things we have to uh, see? Is that knowledge of scriptures is first factor. Second one is the faith. Faith in what? Faith in the scriptures like Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam and Lord that is Vishnu Dattva, either Vishnu or Krishna. Okay, so these two aspects if we see, then we can surely make progress. That's what Prabhupada is telling. And then what will happen by that? We can achieve the result at the end. And what is the result we want? That is Krishna Prema. So that can be attained. Okay, many times devotees think, oh yeah, book distribution is very important. And uh, doing other activities, doing cleaning service, cutting service of sabjis, vegetables, cooking, all these are very important. But you know, uh, reading Prabhupada books, or reading Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, attending Bhakti Shastri class, these are all side business. These all can go on. These are for uh, not us. Okay. These are yeah, some people who are interested can do it. Okay. Like that they think. So that is not what is recommended here by Srila Prabhupada. Okay. Yes, Mataji, please do. As far as the third class person in Krishna consciousness is concerned, although he has faith in the conviction that devotional service to Krishna is very good, he has not yet gained acquired knowledge of Krishna through the scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, so same thing Prabhupada is saying. So who is this third class person? This is Kanishta Adhikari in Krishna consciousness he is concerned Although he has faith in the conviction that devotional service to Krishna is very good. He understands, yes, Bhagavad Gita is good, Srimad Bhagavatam is good, this Bhakti process is good, this chanting is good, Krishna is God, all this he understands. But his understanding is not based on scripture. The scriptural proof he cannot give. What he is, what Prabhupada is saying, he has not yet gained adequate knowledge of Krishna through the scriptures. Okay, so this is very, very important that we gain knowledge about Krishna through the scriptures. So what will happen? Then we will get Shastra Chakshu. And from that Shastra Chakshu, then we can get Prema Chakshu to see Krishna. <coughs> okay, so like this. So we should not think that, oh, yes, I can advance in Bhakti very nicely without reading the books. Without knowing the scriptures, I can very nicely advance. No, Prabhupada has not recommended that process. Okay. So, here he is saying, adequate knowledge of Krishna through the scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita should be there. Yeah. Okay. So, this section we completed and we will start next section now. Anybody has any question on these first three verses, what we discussed?
Okay, we will continue from four years. Yeah, so now Krishna is going to explain about the Ashwari Gyan. So what is the purpose of speaking this as we saw in the seventh chapter also? Krishna spoke about his Ashwarya. Okay, starting from the Vibhutis. I am the taste of water. Correct, you remember we discussed that, na? I am the taste of water and so many other things Krishna told. Mm -hmm. So, similarly, in this chapter also, Krishna is going to speak about his Ashwarya, Gyan. Okay, so that that will invoke Bhakti. Okay, so it will invoke Bhakti. Because this ninth chapter is mainly about Bhakti Yoga. Okay, so now he is going to explain his relationship with the material world. And in which form is Krishna coming in the material world? We discuss in seventh chapter. What is the form of Krishna in the material world? Which form does he appear? Paramatma. Paramatma. Okay. In the form of Paramatma, he maintains the universe. Okay. He enters all the atoms. He sustains it. And he destroys also. So this Paramatma feature is going to be discussed in detail now. Okay. So and what was the shloka quoted earlier? So he told that example. Just like the thread is there in the necklace. So in that same way, I am entering the universe. That was the example given there. Okay. Okay, fourth shloka. Maya tadam idam sarvam jagad avyakta murtina matsthani sarva bhutani nacha ham teshu avasthita. Okay. Uh, Arun Pro, please read the translation. Uh, should I read Guruji? Yeah. Translation. By me, in my unmanifested form, this entire new universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. Yeah, so in my unmanifested form, he is saying, so that we will see what is the meaning. Okay. So, here he is explaining about his Ashwarya. So, Ashwarya means what? Every, anything related to the material world. Okay, and Madhurya means that which is related to the spiritual world. Okay, that is called as Madhurya. And in that also there is division. But here is specifically Ashwarya means that which is related to the material world. That is called Ashwarya here. Okay, and then what feature of Lord? Paramatma feature. Okay, yes. So here Lord is bringing a contrast. So Lord enters the entire universe okay and all beings are in me and but i am not in them will be explained in next verses yes bro please read balde vidya vision <clears throat> the lord then speaks of his remarkable powers which stimulate devotion to him this whole universe is pervaded tatam by me i am in everything who swarupa cannot can not be grasped by the material senses in order to maintain and regulate it. And though I am in everything and maintain and regulate everything, all moving and non-moving entities are simultaneously situated within me. This means their existence is dependent on me. And I am not situated in all of these living entities. I am not dependent on them. Mm, yeah. So if you see the shloka, there are three aspects there. What are the three things? So here he is saying, in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. Okay, this is first. All beings are in me. Second, I am not in them. Okay, so these three aspects in the purport it will be described. See here now. So the first point. The Lord then speaks of his remarkable powers. Okay, this is power for what? What is the purpose? To invoke or stimulate devotion, as I told. So, okay, this whole universe is pervaded by me. 
I am in everything. Correct? That was there in the second part of the shloka. Okay? Whose swarupa cannot be grasped by the material senses. So what is the word told in the shloka? Avyakta. See here. Jagad avyakta murtina. So he is there in the universe, but we cannot see him. How he is there inside? We cannot see the Paramatma feature by our gross eyes. Okay. And why does it enter? In order to regulate and maintain it. Okay. So that is a second point. And although I am in everything and maintain and regulate everything, all moving and all moving entities are simultaneously within me. So this is third point. Okay. They are within me. This means their existence dependent is dependent on me. So this is the important line. Remember this. What is the meaning of the third point is the living entity depends on the Lord, is dependent on the Lord. That is the meaning of the third point. Because later the contradiction will come in the next verse. Okay. And I am not situated in all these living entities. I am not dependent on them. What is the meaning of this point? I am not situated in all the living beings. Okay. Although I am in everything. Okay. That was the second point. All beings are in me. That is second point. No? This, is second. this is third. I am not in them. Okay. So what is the meaning of that? This we have to remember. I am not dependent on the living entities. Okay. Lord is not dependent on living entities. So living entity, it depends on the Lord. But the Lord, he is not dependent on the living entity. Okay. So that two things we have to remember. Yes, we'll continue. What is said here is that taking the role of the Paramatma Antaryami of the universe, which is my expansion, entering within the universe, I control and support it. Hmm. So this is the meaning of the verse. When he's saying Matsthani Sarvabhutani, that means I have entered all the living entities. This is the meaning. As a Paramatma, in the role of Paramatma, in the form of Paramatma, I have entered. Okay. And then there is a proof given from the Brahmadharanaka Upanishad. Okay. I pervade this whole universe. Okay. Shla Prabhupas. Here it is said that although he is all pervading, everywhere present, he is not conceivable by the material senses. Hmm. Yeah. So this that, is indicated uh, he, here. Told earlier also, he is in the Paramatma feature. And what is the uh, Sanskrit word for this? He is not conceivable by material senses. What word was used? Avyakta. Ah, yes, Avyakta. Correct. So, Yeah, please read. But actually, uh, this is indicated here by the word Avyakta Murtina. But mm -hmm. actually, although we cannot see him, everything is resting in him. Mm. Yeah, so even though we cannot see, but he is everything resting in him. Wow, well, he is a maintainer of all. Yeah. As we have discussed in the seventh chapter, the entire material cosmic manifestation is only a combination of its two different energies, the superior spiritual energy and the inferior material energy. Just as the sunshine is spread all over the universe, the energy of the Lord is spread all over the creation and everything is resting in that energy. Yet one should not conclude that because he is spread all over, he has lost his personal existence. To refute such an argument, the Lord says, I am everywhere and everything is in me, but still I am aloof. Hmm. Yeah, so this example Prabhupada has given to explain. So just sunshine is spread all over, but that doesn't mean the sun planet is gone. Sun planet is no more. 
Okay, not like that. And then this point we discussed earlier. Superior spiritual energy is the Jiva Shakti. And the inferior metal energy is the Prakriti. So that was explained earlier. These two aspects we explained as the aspect of Jnana. Okay, so Ashwarya Jnana. Yes, Prabhu. For example, a king heads a government which is but the manifestation of the king's energy. The different governmental departments are nothing but the energies of the king and each department is resting on the king's power. But still one cannot expect the king to be present in every department personally. This is a crude example. The creation takes place by the diffusion of his different energies. And as stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Vistabhyaham Idam Krishnam, he is everywhere present by his personal representation, the, diffus the diffusion of his different energies. Is there any disconnection? Yeah, it seems Prabhuji has left uh -huh. due to internet connection. He may be ah, yeah, yeah, I thought. Next, is it audible? You are able to hear? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, sorry. Some signal problems. Yes, please. Uh, from first point, Prabhuji, for example? Uh, no, no. Second, second. But still. But still, one cannot expect the king to be to be present in every department personally. This that is a crude example. Mm. The creation takes place by the diffusion of his different energies, and as stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Vishtabhyaham Idam Krishna. He is everywhere present by his personal representation, the diffusion of his different energies. Yes, thank you. So another example, Prabhupada is giving here the example of the king. So he is saying that as a king is present as the head of the government and the government is uh, running by his direction and government is like his energy spread out, that does not mean that king is vanished. Now king is no more. Okay. King also exists. His energy also exists. So we have to understand there is Krishna and then there is his energy. Okay, so the person Krishna is there separately and his energy is also separately. Okay. So that's what Prabhupada is saying. The diffusion of his different energies are there in this metal world. Okay. So now Lord is continuing this section. Nachamatsthani bhutani paschame yogam aishwaram bhuta bhrinna chas bhuta Mamatma Bhuta Bhavana. Okay. Pranati, would you like to read? Yes, Prabhuji. And yet, hmm. and yet everything that is created does not rest in me. Behold my mystic opulence, although I am the maintainer of all living entities, and although I am everywhere. I am not a part of this cosmic manifestation, for myself is the very source of creation. Hmm. So now, previous verse we saw, Lord told that I pervade everything. And now in this verse, he is saying, Na bhutani. 
yet everything that is created does not rest in me. So this seems contradictory. Correct. Huh? Now last where she so I am pervading everything in Avyakta Murti now. And now he is saying everything that I created does not rest in me. <clears throat> we all are wishing, although I am internal of all the divinities and although I am everywhere, I am not part of this cosmic manifestation. Okay. So we'll read what is the meaning of this. So <clears throat> here he is saying. Krishna is not in them. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, so he is not in them directly. No problem. He is not there in them directly. This we have to understand. Okay. He is there, but he is not there directly. What is the meaning of this? One meaning as we understood, he is there in the form of Paramatma. Okay, another thing we will read now. Yes, Mati. But it would be... Oh, you can read, no? It's okay or somebody else should I ask? No, no, I can read. Now okay. I can read. But it would be very uh, tiring for you to carry such a heavy burdens as the universe. The okay, yeah, just one minute, one minute. Yeah. So this this is a, a opposing party. He is uh, giving a... Uh, uh, what you say, uh, uh, question kind of thing or a argument. Yeah, uh, argument is here. Okay, so he is trying to give an argument. Why this argument is given? See, previous verse, Krishna told, I pervade everything, I maintain everything. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, uh, many times we would have seen somebody like some, uh, Atlas. There is a person, Prabhupada also tells in the purport here, I think. Yeah, Atlas holding a globe. So we would have seen that he is holding the globe and he is very tireful and he is feeling very difficult to hold it. So Lord is not feeling that burden of the universe. So that the argument is told okay, from the opposing party that you, you must be feeling a lot of burden right, by maintaining burden of the universe. Why? Because you are the maintainer and controller as you told in the previous verse. Correct. Sorry, 9.4. It was told, yeah. So, but what Lord is going to reply, we'll see. Yes. Uh, yes, please continue. The things created by me are not within me like water in a pot. Not yeah, so one example is given. Yeah, just one minute. This example is given here. Nacha mat sthani bhutani. Bhutani means living entities. Okay, but they are not <coughs> situated, they are not within me. In what sense they are not within me? Like water in a pot. So when the water is there in a pot, we can see that the pot is containing the water directly. It is feeling the load of the water. The pressure of the water is there in all directions for the pot. And if the pot is weak, then pot will break also. Correct. So this is the meaning that Lord is saying that it is not like this, that I am holding the living entity directly. In what sense? Yeah, please read. But in the previous verse, you said that everything was situated in you. Matsthani Sarvabhutani. And in this verse, you contradict this by saying everything is not in you. Nacha Matsthani Bhutani. Understand? Understand? That this is my extraordinary yoga. Yogam Aishwabhutani. Yeah. So this is again the argument or the contradiction. So this is the answer given by the Lord. What is the answer given? In the shloka he is telling. Pashyame yogam aishwaram. So this is the answer. This is my yoga. This is my inconceivable energy. Okay. So nachamatsani bhutani, I am not in them. Even though I am in them. So that's why I wrote here, he is not in them directly. He is there into them indirectly. In that sense, he is to Okay. Yes, Mataji. Please continue. Yoga means, yoga means the means by which something very difficult to accomplish is accomplished. Yoga mm. thus refers, refers here to the Lord's body 
endowed with inconceivable shakti whose quality is that his every desire is fulfilled without effort that is satya sankalpa shakti the lord then clarifies the issue i maintain and protect all these bhuta bhuta but i am not situated in or mixed with them at all because my mind mama atma carries out their welfare bhut bhavana i maintain and protect them by my extraordinary yoga by my satya sankalpa shakti i do not have to utilize my body to do this yeah so now he is explaining the contradiction which was there na what is the contradiction in the previous verse you said that everything was situated in you and now you are saying that everything is not in you what is this two to the opposing statement you are telling so then he is answering no oh, this is because of my yoga what is that yoga yoga is this inconceivable shakti this is my yoga and what is the name of that shakti satya sankalpata shakti satya sankalpata shakti means by his desire everything is fulfilled okay just by a desire many times we have na that uh, just lord desires and everything is fulfilled okay desire fulfilled uh, through the energy which energy satya sankalpata shakti so that satya sankalpata shakti engages prakriti or uh, his jeev shakti or uh, his uh, bahiranga shakti ya antaranga shakti these are various shakti which are employed by the lord okay so through his energy he is saying i am not situated or mixed with them means he is not directly in contact lord glances as mahavishnu on the universe and then universe expands and then it fructifies but he is not directly going and doing the creation he does it through durga devi or brahma ji or his uh, bahiranga shakti like that okay so he is not directly involved so he doesn't get mixed with them i maintain and protect them and he does not do maintenance and protection also directly how he does by my extern extraordinary yoga okay which is that that is bahiranga shakti okay which is controlled by satya sankalpata shakti okay i do not have to utilize my body means he doesn't have to personally get involved just by his glance it works and whose glance not even krishna one of the expansion of krishna mahavishnu Yes, propas property. Please read that. The Lord says that everything is resting on Him. Much thani. You are on mute. Now I am audible, Prabhu Ji. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. You are audible. Yeah. Hari Bol, am I audible? Yeah, please read. Yeah. The Lord says that everything is resting on Him. मच्छानि सर्व भूतानि nine nine point four I'm not able to see your shared purpose propaganda हरि बोल या बी तू कांड सी स्क्रीन इस वाला स्क्रीन इस ऑफर एवरीवन आई थिंक यस या सम इश्यू इन द इंटरनेट टुडे दिस शुड नॉट बी दिस शुड नॉट बी मिसअंडरस्टूड The Lord is not directly concerned with the maintenance and sustenance of this material manifestation. Sometimes. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. This one is important. That's what I wrote in the short summary. This Lord is the Lord is not directly concerned. So when he's saying that I am not in them, he is not directly in them. That is the meaning. Okay. Indirectly is there. What is that indirectly? He is there through his energy. in the form of parmatma through the sakat sankalpa shakti like that okay yes matlab sometimes we see a picture of atlas holding the globe on his shoulders he seems to be very tired holding this great earthly planet such an image should not be entertained in connection with krishna's upholding this created universe he mm-hmm. says that he says mm-hmm. that although everything is resting on him he is aloof yeah so he is aloof he is not present directly okay he doesn't engage in controlling 
maintaining directly. Yeah. The planetary systems are floating in space and this space is the energy of the Supreme Lord. But he is different from space. He is differently situated. Yes, Therefore, and thank you. That's what the point of conveying is that he is not involved directly. He is differently situated. He is not getting mixed with the metal energy. Okay. Yes, here. We may think of doing something, but there are so many impediments and sometimes it is not possible to do as we like. But when Krishna wants to do something, simply by his willing, everything is performed so perfectly that one cannot imagine how to how it is being done. Okay, what is Prabhupada explaining here? Baldevidya Bhushan also told the same thing. What is explained in this point? Prabhupada here is explaining about our material condition. No, no, that was explained by Bhante Vidya Bhushan. One term was used for this. Everything happens by his will. I explained also. Yes, Sante Sankalpa Shakti. Yes, yeah. So that only he is explaining here. This is his Satya Sankalpata. Okay, just by his desire. Prabhupada has not written the Sanskrit term, but he is explaining the concept here that it happens. Yeah, continue. The Lord explained this fact, although he is the maintainer and sustainer of the entire material manifestation, he does not touch this material manifestation. Hmm. So he directly is not in touch, he is indirectly there. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Simultaneously, the Lord is present in everything. Yet the common man cannot understand how he is also present personally. He is different from his material manifestation, yet everything is resting on him. This is explained here as Yogam Aishwaryam, the mystic power of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hmm. Yeah. So he is saying, uh, even though he is not directly present, he is present in everything simultaneously, but he cannot be perceived by the common man. So this is Avyakta. Okay. Yeah, and he is different from the metal manifestation, as it was explained earlier. Okay. Yoga Meshwaram. Okay. So now he's continuing. Prabhu, 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 I have one question. Uh, in the Satya Sankalpa Shakti is Yoga Meshwaram, correct? Same. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yatha Kasha Stito Nityam. Vayu Sarvatra Go Mahan, Tatha Sarvani Bhutani, Matthani Iti Upadharaya. Okay. Isha, are you available? Can you read? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Understand that as the mighty wind blowing everywhere rests always in the sky, all created beings rest in me. Yeah, thank you. So now he is giving one example. Lord is giving example now himself. How this happens. Okay. That I am aloof. Okay. Understand that as the mighty wind. Yatha Akasha. Basically here Akasha uh, is ether. Valdevita Bhushan and Vishnu Jagras told ether. And that is similar to sky. But not exactly the sky we understand. Okay. Our sky is like most of the thing is air, but this is like ether. Okay. So this is proper translating a situation within sky is not the sky which we understand. It is ether. And why is telling about ether? I will tell you. <laughs> See, Vayu Sarvatra Gomahan. Vayu is the air which is situated in the ether. Okay. Everything needs space to occupy. That space is called ether. Ether is a space. Space here, who is occupying the space? Air. Air is occupying the space, just like earth, water, air, ether, fire, five things are there. Other four need the ether to occupy it. Okay. Ether itself is independent. Okay. Like that. And why Lord has chosen this uh, Akash only? Because it always remains unmixed. Okay. So, 
ether always remains uh, aloof or better we can say unmixed with other elements like ether and fire when they are together it, they will not combine but when fire and water are together they will combine and they will effect similarly when there is air and uh, water together there will be combination that will form some moisture or something they can combine air and water but water and ether they will never combine okay similarly there is earth and water they can combine they can make mud but earth and ether will never combine okay and uh, earth and fire they can combine it will make wood in the wood there is fire correct so combination of all other elements is possible but this ether is special ether always remains aloof it remains unmixed with other elements so it will not combine with fire it will not combine with air it will not combine with water and it will also not combine with earth but these among themselves they can all combine okay so that's why the lord has taken this example akash okay or kham which we call kham in sanskrit okay so they are saying understand that as the mighty wind blowing everywhere rests always in the sky so all created beings are resting me so this mighty wind is living entities it blows everywhere but it has some place to rest means it occupies something that is sky that is compared to the lord here okay but the sky doesn't depend on the wind sky ether is independent of the wind that is the meaning of this verse okay yes mataji please read balde vidya the great air uh, which cannot support itself situated in the great ether which also cannot support itself moves everywhere hmm. since they have no supporting power of their own their existence is enabled by my will alone and movement takes a uh, place through uh, the parmatma within yeah so how this all movement is happening that is through the parmatma feature avyakta feature okay so parmatma feature only makes them move and the parmatma feature if it is not there then neither ether will exist nor the earth will exist nor the fire water air anything all will not exist they are having their features because parmatma is there yeah yeah see here it is written if i did not do this all the elements such as ether would be destroyed so this ether element is being told here okay so in comparison with the lord this is one should not think that lord would be destroyed or lord and when the, here it is said no what is that uh, see the great air which cannot support itself situated in the great ether which also cannot support itself so there we should not tell that oh lord also cannot support itself not in that sense the example is given in the context of aloofness okay not being mixed in that context it is given, being given so we should not extend that example and take it to uh, others direction that oh ether also cannot support itself so lord also cannot support itself no that would be wrong interpretation of the example okay so we have to take the example only in that direction in which direction that example was given it was given in the direction of not mixing with other elements okay unmixed aloofness like that yes mathi please read purpose uh, purpose for the ordinary person it is most it is almost inconceivable how the huge material creation is resting in him but the lord is giving an example which may help us to understand similarly all the wonderful cosmic manifestations are existing by the supreme will of lord and all of them are subordinate to that supreme will yeah so what is lord speaking here he is saying masthani sarvani bhutani 
Mastani. They are all situated in me. And then all of them are subordinate to the supreme will of the Lord. To his Satya Sankalpata Shakti. Okay, whatever he desires, that will happen. Okay. Yeah, please continue. Thus, everything is moving under his will. And by his will, everything is being created. Everything is being maintained and everything is being annihilated. Still, he is aloof from everything, as the sky is always aloof from the activities of the wind. In the Upanishad, it is stated, Yad Bhisha Vata Pavati. It is out of the fear of the Supreme Lord that the wind is blowing. Yeah. So, in this verse, um, yeah, we completed this. Yeah. So, here, whole thing, we can understand that Lord is trying to explain three points. From this whole example, let's see what is next. Uh, okay, yeah, some other concept is starting. Okay, so here through these three verses, we can understand four, five, six. God is trying to say three things. One is that He is aloof, He is not mixed. Okay, He is not uh, touched or contaminated. All these words Prabhupada used, correct? He is not contaminated or touched by the material world. This is one point was explored. Okay. We can say also he was not affected. He is not affected. So these all things Prabhupada used actually. So this one point he conveyed. Second was he is not attached to the material world or his creation. Like we may be attached to our creation, uh, whether it is we do some service, even though it is spiritual, we may do for the Lord. But when we do it, we are attached and that is natural for living entity to be attached to what he has created or he has done. It's not unnatural and it should be there to some extent, but it should not be to the, some, such an extent that it absorbs our mind if it is taken our mind and we are not able to do any other service. Okay, or it may be our family, like that is also contribution is there in the family. So we should be maintaining the family, but we should not be attached like the Lord is doing here. So he's showing by his example that how he is aloof and he is not attached, but still he is doing the maintaining and creating. Okay, and then third point which Prabhupada told, and he doesn't feel the burden. Okay not feeling the burden. Okay, that was fifth words. So these three points actually Prabhupada is explaining through these three purposes. Okay. Okay, go to next verse. So here he will explain about the creation, destruction, all that things he will explain. Seventh and eighth verse, creation and destruction will be explained. Okay. So, 7th and 8th. Creation and destruction of metal world. Sarva Bhutani Konteya Prakritim Yanti Mamikam Kalpachaye Punastani Kalpado Vishrijami Ham. Okay. Uh, Runamati, are you available to read? Yes, Raji. Translation, Raji? Yeah. O son of Kunti, at the end of the millennium, all material manifestations enter into my nature and at the beginning of another millennium, by my potency, I create them again. Yeah. So now he is saying what happens for the material world? How is the uh, course of action? So at the end of the millennium, so this we discussed at the... Uh, Big eighth chapter, there was discussion about pralaya. Okay, so we discussed that. So <clears throat> that is at the end of the day of Brahma, at the end of the millennium, all metal manifestations that is this whole 14 planetary systems, it enters into my nature. Okay. And at the beginning of another millennium, by my potency, I create them again. Okay. Yeah, so here the End of millennium is at the end of life of Brahma. 
Why? Because whole creation is being destroyed, even the upper planetary system. But if you remember, we discussed at the end of the day of Brahma, the top four planetary systems, they are not destroyed. Correct. Ten Below 10 are destroyed, but the top four are not destroyed. Similarly, in this verse, Lord is speaking about at the end of life of Brahma. What happens? Brahma along with all his associates will go and enter in the Mahavishnu or the Karana Daksha Vishnu as well as the whole metal world is destroyed. Okay, so that will be explained in the purport. Mm. Okay, so here we'll read Balde with the Bhushan's purport. Yes. Uh, yes, Mataji, please read. It has just been stated that the maintenance of all beings takes place by the will of the Lord alone. Now, mm. the Lord speaks about creation okay. and destruction of all entities. Mm. Yeah. So, this is the topic of this verse. Okay. Yeah. The creation, maintenance and annihilation of this material cosmic manifestation are completely dependent on the supreme will of the personality of Godhead. Mm. At the end of the millennium means at the death of Brahma. Yeah, this is what I told him. Anyway. So at the end of the 100 years of Brahma are completed. So the whole metal world it enters uh, Karano Dakshai Vishnu. Okay. The whole metal world enters. And then after that, again when the creation has started, so from Karana Dakshaya Vishnu, again the Pradhan will come out. Then from that Pradhan, then he will glance and then it will become Mahatattva. Then in Mahatattva, then again Lord will enter and then it will become the universe, functional universe basically, along with Brahma. Okay. So that's how again he will describe the destruction also. Again. Yeah, continue, Mati. After 100 such years, when Brahma dies, the devastation or annihilation takes place. This means that the energy manifested by the Supreme Lord is again wound up in himself. Then again, when there is a need to manifest the cosmic world, it is done by his will. Yeah. So again, Lord does the manifestation. Again, by Satya Sankalpata Shakti, by his energy. Okay, by his will. Okay. Prabhuji? Yes, Mataji. Just a small thing. Uh, Prabhuji, mm -hmm. you said at the end of 100 years of Brahma, Brahma along with the residents of his planets entered into uh, which Vishnu, Prabhuji? Maha uh, Karana Daksha Vishnu, Maha Vishnu, because others are not there. Because Garbo Daksha Vishnu is inside the universe only. Now the whole universe is destroyed. So he will not be there. So, who remains is only Karana Daksha Vishnu. Okay, right. Yeah, that is same as Mahavishnu, who is lying down on the Karana Daka Ocean. Okay, Karana Ocean, basically. Ka we say na causal ocean. That one. Viraja. Okay. So, eighth verse. So, Lord is continuing this destruction and creation concept. Prakritim Swam Avishtabhya Vishri Jami Puna Puna. Bhutagramam imam kritsnam avasham prakrte vasat. Nagnijati Priyamati, you would like to read? The whole cosmic order is under me, under my will, it is automatically manifested again and again. And under my will, it is annihilated at the end. Yeah, thank you. So now again, Lord is saying about the whole uh, creation and destruction. How it happens? It happens under him. Under him. What is that? Swam Abhishtabhya. Swam is my personal self. Okay. So the metal nature enters. Abhishtabhya enters into what? In his own self. So what is that self? So even though this is Krishna speaking, what he is saying here about Karana Daksha Vishnu. Okay, because Karna Daksha Vishnu is his own part, his own expansion, like that. So he is referring to that person. And then what he does, the whole nature enters him. Then what he does, I create again and again. Again and again it destroys, again and again he creates. 
विश्रीजामी पुनः पुनः एंड व्हाट इज देयर इनसाइड दिस यूनिवर्स भूत सो दे आर ऑल द लिविंग इंटिटीज या भूत ग्रामम ऑल द कॉस्मिक मैनिफेस्टेशन इंक्लूडिंग द लिविंग इंटिटीज एक्चुअली दैट इज टोल्ड इन परपट ओके सो व्हाट हैपेंस देयर इज इमाम कृष्णम अवश्यम ऑटोमेटिकली okay the automatic it's not that lord has to do every activity through his energy it is fulfilled automatically how by which energy prakriti hai by the force of the nature okay by his bhairanga shakti under his control under his obligation that that energy does this creation and destruction okay so this is creation and uh, destruction under Krishna's will. Okay, Baldev Vidya Bhushan is coming. Yes, Mati. Baldev Vidya Bhushan sir, comment ki. How does this take place? It takes place by the power of impressions of previous karmas, prakrite vasat. Uh, beyond their power, avasam, that is by the will of the Lord, who has inconceivable shakti and detachment from all of that. Yeah. So basically, he is explaining about the word avasham, that the living entities are helplessly again, again taken out of the universe and it made them enter the universe. Correct. That's what is happening. So this is the universe. So living entity goes inside the universe. Creation happens. They go inside, and then when the universe is destroyed, then again living entity comes out and enters the Vishnu. And again, creation happens. Then again they enter. Then again it is destroyed. Then again they come out. So they are avasham. They are helplessly uh, going through this cycle. Okay. Why? By the will of the Lord. And why does the Lord will like this? Because they have previous karma. Who? The living entities. The living entities have the impressions of the previous karma. Okay. That is called vasna. Okay. So they want to enjoy. some material sense objects so that lord has to make facility for them to do it where is that facility that facility is in the material world so that's why lord has to create this material world so many times we see here na that uh, this universe was created because of the desire of the living entity what is it meaning it is will of the lord but it is ultimately the desire of living entity to enjoy and then lord fulfills or facilitates to fulfill their desire okay that we have to understand yes mathi shila prabhupad's commentary this mm -hmm. material world is the manifestation of the inferior energy of the supreme personality of godhead this has already been explained several times all the creation the material energy is let loose at the mahat tatva into which the lord as his first purusha incarnation mahavishnu enters he lies within the causal ocean and breathes out innumerable universes and into each universe the lord again enters as garbhodakshai vishnu each universe is in that way created he still further manifests himself as shirodakshai vishnu and that vishnu enters into everything even into the minute atom this fact is explained here he enters into everything yeah so this is the activities of three vishnus okay so those who want to know down can see here what are their activities so this is first mahavishnu second garbhadaksha vishnu and third paramadaksha vishnu so he enters as a parmatma into every atom and the living entity both garbhadaksha vishnu is the parmatma of universe and mahavishnu is also considered as parmatma of whole material world okay so all three are parmatma so mahavishnu is parmatma of whole material world garbhodaksha vishnu is the parmatma of each universe or one universe and then shirodaksha vishnu he is the regular parmatma which we know he enters every atom and living entities 
ओके सो दी वेव थ्री परमात्मा थ्री विष्णु थ्री परमात्मा Oh, Paramatma means generally uh, understanding that the person who activates, maintains, creates, destroys that respective, uh, whether it is material world or it is the single universe or whether it is the atoms and the respective living entities' bodies. Okay, so there's three of their respective functions that is explained in this purple. Okay. Yes, Mataji, please continue. Now, as far as the living entities are concerned, they are impregnated into this material nature and as a result of their past deeds, they take different positions. Thus, the activities of this material world begins. Yeah, so as per their past deeds means what? So same thing Baldevi Devshan also so told, their past karmas, if you remember that word was used. Okay. And also the word was used impression, vasana. So every living entity has some past impression. Oh, this I should not try to enjoy. This gives suffering. That is duesha. And there is raga. Oh, this I should enjoy. This gives me happiness. So every living entity has stored that impressions in his subtle bodies. That is there. Okay. And when the uh, again the creation happens, those desires are again given to the living entity as per their previous uh, desires. Okay. That is explained. Yes. Continue, Matthew. It is clearly indicated here by the word avasam that the living entities have nothing to do with this process. The state of being in their past life, in the past creation is simply manifested again and all this is done simply by his will. Mm -hmm. This is the inconceivable potency of the Supreme Personality of God. And after creating different species of life, he has no connection with them. The creation takes place to accommodate the inclinations of the various living entities. And so the Lord does not become involved with it. Yeah, so, so living entities is the desiring doer. Correct, we discussed this earlier. So living entity is surely a doer, but he is desiring doer. He desired. And then Lord is sanctioning doer. He sanctions. Correct. So... Lord is the sanctioning doer. And then he sanctions, but he doesn't directly get involved. So he has the Prakriti who gets directly involved and she is the performing doer. She performs the task on behalf of the Lord. Okay, so this we have to understand. The three doers. Okay, living entity, desiring doer, Lord is sanctioning doer, and he is aloof. And Prakriti is performing doer. She does it. She directly gets involved and does it. Okay. Okay, next. Nachamam tani karmani nibadhanati nibadhananti nibadhananti dhananjaya udasinavad asinam asaktam teshu karmashu Okay, Harsh, Harsh Prabhu, would you like to read? Are you there? Oh, Jananjaya, all this work cannot bind. I am ever detached from all these material, like, material activities. Separate and treated as no okay, okay, I think you are traveling, Prabhu, today also. <laughs> so, okay, somebody else can read. Okay. I, I can volunteer, Prabhu. Ah, yes, yes, surely. A purpose can read, yeah. So, Dhananja, yeah. So, oh, Dhananja, all this work cannot bind me. Nacha maam tani karmani nibadhananti. Nibadhananti means to bind. Okay. Dhananja, oh, Dhananja. What is not binding me? Tani karmani. What, what activity was explained till now? Creation and destruction was explained till now. Okay. So, those, all those activities. Those means what? This creation and destruction. Why? Why it doesn't bind? Udasina vat. So, as if Udasina, Udasina what? Proper, it's neutral. As if neutral. Okay. So, this I will explain. Why as if has come. Udasina vat. Like we have jada vat. 
as if stone or as if uh, immovable like that okay like that udasin vat vat wherever it comes vat comes means as if asinam situated okay why he is not bound because he is udasin vat situated okay asaktam he is unattached why is udasin because he is asaktam okay uh Asaktam, without attraction, Teshu, for those activities. Okay. I am ever detached from all these material activities, seated as though neutral. Yeah, Prabhupada, here he has written. Yeah, as though neutral. Yeah, here is as neutral. Yeah, so this we'll explain. <clears throat> yes, Kishu yeah. uh, When inequality in the matter of creation and maintenance uh, bind even you because of your act of injustice. Uh, see, what is the argument here by opposition? Argument is that, oh, you are giving different, different results to all living entities. So you are giving good results to some people. You are giving bad results to some people. So because of the acts of your injustice, you are doing injustice. Now you are giving bad to some people, bad results. So what should happen is, you will get the inequality. You have the inequality. What is the inequality? You do two things. You do good. You do bad. Some living entities who have done good, you give them good result. Some living entities who do bad, do you give them bad results. So this is inequality in you. Because of that, you should get bound. Okay. So when we also do something good to some people and something bad to others, it is natural that Whoever we like, we have done, we are doing good to them. And whoever we don't like, we do bad to them. So Lord is being put, uh, you know, alleged. It's called allegation. Uh, he has been, he has been put into on this allegation that you will get bound because you are doing good to some people and you are going, doing bad to some people. So in answer, Lord is speaking this verse. So where is the answer? Answer is this ninth verse. Okay, 9.9. .9. Okay, that is the answer to this allegation. Okay, so answers. Yeah, this is not so. The inequality seen in creation and maintenance does not contaminate me with the quality of injustice. So, here the Lord is answering. It will not contaminate me. Okay, so why? The reason Lord is explaining himself. That is the last two lines of the verse. What are the last two lines? This is the answer. Okay, so what is saying? Previously incurred karmas alone are the causes of different bodies, such as deva, human, or animal, or these jivas, for these jivas. I am neutral to their unequal karmas. Udasinavad. See, so Lord is only sanctioning person. Na? He is only the sanctioner. What is sanctions? Whatever was the desire, sanctioner of desires of living entities. He is not himself having those desires. And these desires are good or bad. That is the desire of living entity which is good or bad. It is not the sanction of the Lord which is good or bad. So that's why he is not attached. He doesn't incur the karma. He doesn't uh, get attached. He doesn't get bound. And that's why he is unequal. He is, he is a Udasinvat. He is neutral. Okay. <clears throat> yes, Prabhuji. Mm -hmm. yeah, nothing is yeah, highlighted. Yeah. So should I read everything? Yeah, yeah just read this. Yeah, this part. Those karma cannot attribute to me the fault of injustice. Satyam. The author of Vedanta says, Vaisham Nairo Grena Read the English part, yeah. Okay. Lord has no partiality or cruelty because the pleasure and pain suffering by the living being is caused by their karmas. So okay. the scripture declare. Yeah, so it's this is the proof given from the scriptures. So this concept was told. What is the concept? Second was Asaktam. What was the first one? Udasinvat, correct? Yeah. These two things we found out in the verse. So these two points are there. Karmas cannot attribute to me 
the fault of injustice because they are whose karmas? They are living into these karmas. That's not Lord. So Prabhupada gives the example many times of the High Court judge. Anybody remembers that example? What Prabhupada gives in this context? The High Court judge example he gives. He, he may be an ordinary person in his life, but when in the capacity of judge, he will be neutral and give the proper verdict, good for good, bad for bad. No, no. In the relation to being unattached, he gives the example of High Court judge. How he is unattached? So, while declaring punishment, he will not remain attached to the... Yeah, so yeah, something similar he says that the high court judge he gives as per the activity of the living entity he has done. He sees the rule book and then he awards punishment or he awards good things like that. So it's not his own choice that I will give something bad to this person, I will give something good to this person like that. Okay, he gives it as per the activity of the person who has done the criminal activity or good activity like that. Okay. Okay, so next verse we are going. Proji, this one small question. Ah, yes, Proji. Proji, here uh, suddenly the word is used uh, oh, Dhananjaya mm -hmm. or Arjuna. Mm -hmm. And its meaning is written here, uh, O conqueror of riches. Mm -hmm. so, like, Puji, uh, which why this is used? Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, I don't yes, know. Sir. Here, it is not explained by Acharyas why Dhananja word particularly used. Here, that is not explained. I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next verse, 10th. Maya Dakshayana Prakriti. So this is a very famous verse. Many times Srila Prabhupada quoted this verse. Okay. Who has not read? So I am seeing different, different devotees are doing many, many, many things. Uh, Arun Prabhu, you are doing something? Or you are traveling? Bus party, bus is moving. Okay, okay. Okay, you can plan na? last time also you were in bus party and you can plan some other time now. Or you think this class is not important? No, no, no. I, I hear I hear it again and then make notes. Okay, okay, okay. I, I'll send you. No, no need to send notes, but it's not a good example that you are traveling while the class is going on. It's it's like a one month traveling bus party. I can't oh, okay. Good, good, good. Okay. Next week it will be there and then it will right. Okay, okay. Okay, good. Okay, and uh, okay, Prasanna Gopal Bro, are you available? I'm I'm available. I mean, the sitting in the hospital, so in waiting room. Uh, okay. There is some noise. If you are comfortable with this, I can read for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm comfortable. I okay. Yeah, I just, okay. Uh, could I read this? Yes, yes. Translation. A translation. By my direction, my adjection, a prakriti gives rise to the universe of moving and non moving entities. Prakriti suyate sacharachara. By this cause, anena he tuna, portion of kunti, kaunte, the universe appears again and again. Jagat viparivartati. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Roji. Yeah, there was some background noise. It's okay. Ah, that's yeah, what. That's some, why I was. No yeah. problem. Okay. Yeah. So this very famous verse, uh, as we discussed, Maya Adyakshana Prakriti by my direction. Who is speaking? Lord is speaking. Now he is concluding this section. Which section? Aishwarya Gyan section. Okay. And what was the last three verses telling about? They told about creation and destruction. Destruction. So now he is concluding this part that this prakriti is working under my direction. Okay. Suyate sa chara acharam. So two words are there chara and achara means moving and non moving. See here chara achara and suyate. Prakriti gives rise 
to the universe okay that is what that is creation okay and hetu na anena kaunteya by this cause hetu na okay kaunteya o son of kunti the universe appears again and again jagad this is universe vipari vartate appears again and again okay so this again he is saying about the creation part okay and destruction as we know that lord shiva he does the destruction part so that part is not told here uh, you can mute yourself to you prasanna gopal i have already muted so somebody else may be ha okay okay some sound is coming okay tab je shalai re ha yes mata ji yeah just one minute thank you shiva yes please read the lord further expounds this idea plans mm -hmm. upon by me the lord of all the controller of prakriti whose every wish is fulfilled in accordance with the previous karmas of the jivas maya adhyakshena prakriti creates the universe of moving and non moving being mm -hmm. by this anena etuna by my glance which considers the jivas position according to previous karmas this universe appe appears again and again for son of kunti yeah so this is a process given now how does this creation happen it happens by the glance of the lord and me means what here mahavishnu not krishna okay mahavishnu he glances okay and who is the controller of prakriti so as i told you earlier he was the parmatma of material world correct so he is the controller of this prakriti on which he glanced okay and whose every wish is fulfilled by which shakti satya sankalpita shakti that we discussed earlier so he has that energy satya sankalpita shakti by his desire by his glance everything is fulfilled okay and what is what does he fulfill he fulfills as per the desire of the karmas of the jivas so see you see how the summary is given of the whole section all concepts are included now okay satya sankalpata shakti is there then previous karmas of the jivas that was also told earlier i am udasin but it's only the desire of the living entities that uh, i have to create like that and then who creates prakriti creates she is a performing doer okay lord doesn't do it himself correct he is aloof okay lord is aloof okay he is not directly involved that was told in the fifth verse okay i am not situated in them means i am not there in them directly like that so that verse is also covered he creates the universe of moving and non moving things that is told in this verse that is chara achara okay so this line covers the whole summary yeah then there is a proof given here for this uh, yes mother you can read the translation uh, one meditate on prakriti uh, which produces changes which is ignorance of eight forms unborn and fixed ordered expanded and inspired by the lord prakriti again creates the universe and goes for human under his direction alone under his direction means what maya adhyakshena adhyakshena that's what is told here okay yes please continue being the doer and being neutral are not uh, contradictory because the lord rules by proximity only the smriti says yatha sannidhi ritanga na dha sho sobhaya jayate it is just like a fragrance which causes agitation by uh, closeness putana point to my body prakriti is dependent on my control alone now she does not have the power to do anything in the absence of 
copy of the same song uh, here and your action. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, here again, the word is proximity only. That means the Lord is aloof. Okay. And then proof is given with an example. What is the example? Fragrance. So as we understand, there is good uh, fragrance is, is a good smell. Okay. Yeah, there is bad smell, good smell. So good smell is called fragrance. Okay. So this fragrance which causes agitation by closeness. So when we smell something very good like some flower, rose flower. So we immediately uh, feel some emotions. Correct. So that's what is told. Similarly with the Lord. He is aloof. But just by his mere presence, the Prakriti, he, she does the activity. Okay, that is explained here. Prakriti is dependent on my control. So where was this told earlier? Prakriti is dependent on my control alone. Somebody can see. Where was this told? Prakriti is dependent on me. Maya Dekshana Prakriti? Yes, Gadi Maya Dekshana Prakriti. Yes. Fourth verse, yeah. There, yeah. Where it was told in fourth verse? Where is showing the fourth verse? It was explained earlier. Paramatma feature is there in the every atom of the universe. Lord pervades it, and then through this feature, He controls. Correct? You remember it was their maintainer and controller in the fourth verse. Yeah. Okay. We just discussed now half an hour ago. Okay, so at least devotees can try to remember. Okay, in the same section we discussed. Okay. So please try to maintain your interest level because this is not direct, uh, you know, Bhakti Yoga philosophy. This is little indirect till 10th verse. And then also after that, uh, it will be indirect only till 12, 13 also. Okay. 13th will start pure Bhakti. Then after that, 26 only it will come. So, kindly maintain your interest. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and one very good example is given. That how there is a relationship between Lord and uh, Prakriti. Okay. What is the example? So, there is a king compared to the Lord and there are ministers. Like we have now prime minister and there may be different ministers under him, cabinet minister, chief minister, like that. Okay. So that is compared to Prakriti. And Maya Adhyakshena Prakriti, Lord is saying. So under my control, this Prakriti works. So in the absence of the king, there is no power to carry out actions. So they cannot decide. Okay. If the prime minister is not there, so the chief minister and all others cannot come together and decide something. Okay. He has to do that like that. Okay, Shri Prabhupada's uh, commentary. Okay. <laughs> yes, Mate. Please. Uh, commentary by Shri Prabhupada. Shri Prabhupada Nietzsche. It is clearly stated here that the Supreme Lord, although alone from all, loose from all the activities of the material world, remains the uh, 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 Supreme Director. The Supreme Lord is the Supreme Will and the background of this material manifestation, but the management is being conducted by material nature. Krishna mm -hmm. also states in Bhagavad Gita that all, of all the living entities in different forms and species, I am the father. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, thank you, Madhuri. So this same point is again covered, which was told earlier. Prakriti is the performing doer, correct? So the management is being done by the material nature. So like in a company, Prabhupada, you would, would give many times this example also. There is an owner. Okay. There is an owner. So he will not get involved into the management. Okay. He will come sometimes visit the school or college, whatever. And there will be a principal. 
of the college or school who will do the management on whose behalf on the behalf of the owner of the college or the school okay so like that is the situation here also yeah so yeah please read mate this example yeah this point fourth point this example is given uh, no no the, here all these living entities all these living entities also born under the glance of the supreme lord take their different bodies according to the their past deeds and desires mm -hmm. the lord is not directly attached to this material creation he simply glances over material nature material nature is thus activated and everything is created immediately yeah mm -hmm. uh, because glances over material nature there is undoubtedly uh, activity mm, i think you got muted material world direct this example is given in the Wait, wait, wait. please read this again here yeah, because glances over material nature there mm. is undoubtedly activity on the part of the supreme lord mm. but he has nothing to do with the manifestation of the material world directly mm. yeah this example is given in the surati when there is a fragrant flower before someone the fragrance is touched by the smelling power of the person yet the smelling and the flower are detached from one another yeah so that same example prabhupada is explaining here okay and before that he has explained the whole concept that how trupri lord is a sanctioning doer and metal nature is a performing doer okay and example of the fragrance so he is explained little more detail in this that there is a fragrant flower before someone the fragrance is touched by the smelling power of the person yet the smelling and the flower are detached from one another okay so smelling power we can consider as a lord okay and fragrance as the prakriti or vice versa also basically they are aloof that is the point told here aloof from each other okay okay we completed this section anybody has any question on this section what we discussed now okay so we'll continue next section so now third section is this chapter fools neglect bhakti and divine don't okay so in this chapter in this 11 to 25 there will be generally these two topic okay in uh, general but there are many many sub topics in this so i'll try to point out here so that we are not confused so 11 to 12 will be one section where there will be discussion about fools okay and that they neglect bhakti then there will be 13 and 14 two shlokas where there will be discussion about the shuddha bhakti pure devotional service okay so that will be pure devotional service so please mark in your bhagavad gita also so this is the part of what gyan or vigyan this pure devotional service which is going explain 13 and 14 vigyan yeah so this is part of vigyan chit shakti of the lord till now what was explained which which part four to ten what was explained which part gyan or vigyan gyan part material energy yeah that was gyan part means the material energy plus living entity living entity plus material world okay and then 13 14 will be pure devotion that is that will be purely about the shuddha bhakti okay and then 15 onwards there will be discussion about the three types of gyanis that will continue till 19 okay so three types of gyanis basically impersonalists they are not mayavadis not my avadi okay and then last 20 to 25 again will be the 
living god worshipper that similar thing what was explained in the previous seventh chapter there was a description about the living god worshipper here also again there will be some more detail about this so this is the whole section division of this part so now we will discuss this 11 and 12 for today okay avajananti maam mudha manushyam tanuma shritam param bhavam ajananto mam bhuta maheshwaram okay so you can read was not read the mukund patro would you like to read okay bro <coughs> Fools deride me when I descend in the human form. They do not know my transcendental nature as the supreme lord of all that be. Ah, uh, yeah. Actually, uh, here I forgot to do Prabhupada's last session. Yeah. So, okay. Here it says, the fools deride me. Avajananti maam muda. So, muda is for the fools. Avajananti. Okay. So, we'll discuss one more word. There is Avajananti. Okay. Okay. That is not knowing. They are innocent, basically. These people are innocent. And there is another category. This is Avajananti. Means they deride. What they deride? Human form. Of whose eternal human form of the Lord. Okay. So, Mama, that is, Lord is speaking about Himself. They deride my human form. Why they deride? Not knowing. Okay. Ajananto, not knowing. What they are not knowing? That it is my original spiritual form. Mama, Param Bhavam. They don't know this, that it is the Param Bhavam of the Lord. Pure Brahman, higher than all else. Param. Param is higher than everyone else. Okay. So they don't know. So Avajananti Mahmuda, the fools deride me. Why? What they deride? In what way? Manushim Tanu Ashritam. Considering that the Lord has acquired a human form which is just like the other human beings. Not knowing my eternal nature, like that. Okay, so the topic is fools deride the human form of Lord. Okay, mm, yeah, those who are not speaking can mute themselves. Okay, so we'll go to the purport. Yes, please read. Yes, yes, please. Why do people not worship you? You have such a great power. Mm -hmm. Fools, despite me, the one master of all the all universes, Bhuta Maheshwaram, omniscient and the most compassionate, whose every desire is fulfilled. The Lord describes how they deride him. Mm -hmm. They treat me with concept with contempt, thinking that I am. I who am eternally identical with my spiritual form, Tanumashritam, which is fixed in the human form and endowed with human acts, Manushim, I am just an ordinary man with great punya like other, other princes. Ah, yes. <clears throat> so they deride in what way? Here is explained. How they deride? They treat me with contempt. Contempt means uh, something like offense. Yeah, disrespect. And how they disrespect the Lord? Thinking that I, who am eternally identical with my spiritual form, Tanu Mahashritam Param Bhavam, actually, which is fixed in a human body, Tanu Mahashritam, and endowed with humanly acts, acts, Manushim. So what they are deriding, this is the part. They tell him as an ordinary man. And what kind of ordinary man? With great punya. Like whom? Other princes. So they have material punya. Yeah. 
and they they attribute to the lord also so that is the derision or that's how they deride thinking that this human form the lord has appeared this is by his material pious activities like that okay and what is the lord's uh, own original position he so he is saying okay basically first there is a question or argument because till now 4 to 10 what was explained ashwarya so hearing that power of the lord as paramatma and all these things to control and maintain somebody may ask so if you are so powerful why people do not worship you who have such great power you have such great power why they are not worshiping so in answer lord is speaking this verse okay this 9.11 is answer to this question what is the answer avajananti mamuda because they are fools they deride my human form they don't worship me okay that is the answer yeah please read the human body is indeed made of the five material elements but the body of god is not like that this is stated in the shruti any some background somebody is um, on this is stated in the shruti sachidananda rupa kshanaya i offer my respect to krishna whose form is eternity knowledge and please gopal tapani upanishad 1.1 tam ekam govindam sachidananda vigraham i satisfy with prayers that one govinda whose body is eternity knowledge and bliss gopala tapni upanishad 1.33 so these are all proofs given for what lord doesn't have the manushim nature he is not human being like us but what he is sachidananda rupaya krishna hai. okay as brahma ji also says correct ishwara parma krishna sachidananda vigraha correct so he is sachidan form like that yeah no pass correct yes rohit okay can i read it in book directly prajin if it's complete ah yeah yeah this false slide here till the lord here till here we are read okay we'll mark here. from the from the other explanation of the previous verses in this chapter it is clear that the supreme personality of godhead although appearing like a human being is not a common man the personality of godhead who conducts the creation maintenance and annihilation of the complete cosmic manifestation cannot be a human being yet there are many flesh men who consider krishna to be merely a powerful man and nothing more actually he is the original supreme personality as he as is can form in the brahma samhita ishvara parama krishna he is the supreme lord yeah so both the points again prabhu has covered so one thing is that he is not human ordinary human so that is first point and then second thing he has also covered that what is his original form that is sachidananda vigra okay so both the points are covered in this yeah so now you can read from the next there are many ishwaras controllers and one appears greater than another in the ordinary mm-hmm. management of affairs in the material world we find some official or a director and above him there is a secretary and above him a minister and above him a president mm-hmm. each of them is a controller but one is controlled by another in the brahma samhita it is stated that krishna is the supreme controller there are many controllers undoubtedly both in the material and spiritual world but krishna is the supreme controller ishvara parama krishna and his body is sachidananda non material yeah so same thing yeah so now prabhupada give me another example as we have discussed earlier okay in the cabinet minister uh, minister in the cabinet there will be many many ministers but above all of them is the prime minister okay similarly there is example here that there may be some thing like director secretary president all these things minister okay and there was another example given if you remember king and the minister okay so all these examples are similar okay conveying what conveying that lord is the supreme controller okay there are many controllers but there is one supreme controller okay so that he is also saying from brahma samhita ishwara means controller parama means supreme who is that krishna like that yes material body yes. yeah. material body is cannot perform the wonderful acts described in the previous verses his body is eternal blissful and full of knowledge 
although he is not a common man the foolish deride him and consider him to be a man his body is called manushin manushin because he is acting just like a man a friend of arjuna a politician involved in the battle of kurukshetra in so many ways he is acting just like an ordinary man but actually his body is sachidananda vigra eternal bliss and knowledge absolute this is confirmed in the vedic language also sachidananda rupaya krishnaya i offer my obeisances unto the supreme personality of god at krishna who is the eternal blissful form of knowledge gopal tapani upanishad 1.1 there are other descriptions in the vedic language also tamekam govindam you are govinda the pleasure of the senses and the cows sachidananda vigraham and your form is transcendental full of knowledge bliss and eternity gopal tapani upanishad 1.35 yes thank you too. so same thing prabhu is saying about the sachidananda form okay this purport is very big i marked only Part of it. So here we can read from here. This is next paragraph in between. You can read from here only. Yeah. Difficult to find maybe. If a soul surrender to Krishna can get out of the influence of material energy, then how can the Supreme Lord, who conducts the creation, maintenance, and annihilation of the whole cosmic nature, have a material body like us? So no. this conception. So basically, one argument Prabhupada is giving. Very very important argument. This we should remember. this very important okay many times people will tell us that oh krishna he is doing ras lila he is coming under the control of the gopis he is acting like a hempet husband he is bringing parijata tree all these things many many people will tell so for that one example prabhupada is giving which we can remember if a soul surrender to krishna can get out of the influence of material energy there are so many people mahatmas who have come out of the influence of material energy they have got liberated they have gone to spiritual world then how can the supreme lord who conducts the creation maintenance and annihilation of all the kinds of manifestation have a material body like us and how can he be influenced by the material nature correct if people are worshiping him who can overcome material nature then how can he be attracted to the material nature correct na no? that is the argument here propad is giving yes please read so this conception of uh, krishna is complete foolishness this conception of krishna Uh -huh. is complete foolishness yeah like that we were foolish, foolish persons however cannot conceive the that the personality of god and krishna appearing just like an ordinary man can be control can be the controller of all all the atoms and of the gigantic manifestation of the universal form mm. the biggest and the uh, minutes are beyond yeah minus the are beyond their conception so they cannot imagine that a form like that of human being can simultaneously control the infinite and the minute mm, yes so we'll go to the next verse okay this section will complete <laughs> what uh, what is the result that these people receive who consider krishna as ordinary living entity so here it says moga asha moga karmano moga gyana vichet sar राक्षसी आशुरी जैवा प्रकृति मोहिनी श्रिता अमंग दोस हु कैन नॉट डिस्टिंग दिस ट्रुथ से चोज हु आर डिवोटिस डू नॉट गेन सालोक्य मोघशा those who are karmis do not attain their material fruits moha karmano and those who are gyanis do not attain liberation moha gyana they assume the nature mohinim prakritim shrita of rakshasas and asuras rakshasim asuri chaiva yeah. so the various results that the people are aspiring but they are disrespecting the form of the lord they will not get that's what is said here okay so uh, no fulfillment of the respective aspiration okay they are desiring various things what are the different aspirations see three things are mentioned for the karmis then there are gyanis and there are yogis 
You are not mentioned. Do not attend. Okay. So among those who cannot distinguish this truth, who are devotees, do not gain salokya. Okay. Mog asha. Mog means they have unfulfillment of what asha of some certain desire of some aspiration. They do go and don't go to salokya. Those who are karmis, they do not attain material fruits like going to heaven. Mog karma. And those who are jnanis do not attain liberation. Okay. Those who are jnanis, so actually first one are here. Okay. Uh, these are those who don't gain salokya. Okay. This is third category. So three categories are there. So jnanis, they do not attain liberation. They wanted liberation. But they are not getting their respective results. Why? Because as it was explained in previous verse, they consider ordinary form. Of the Lord as human being. Okay, that is the reason. Yes, Mataji, please read. What is the destination of those who deride you in your uh, human form, thinking that you have a material body and have attained great power by very great act of punya? Even if they are devotee of the Lord, they are deprived of obtaining moksha, moga asa. If they are fixed in fruitive sacrifices, those actions are without result. Being a waste of energy, moga karmana. If they are devoted to study of Vedanta or Jnana, their understanding bears no result. Why? They are perplexed, vichetasaha, having destroyed their power of discrimination by the sin of rejecting me, the Supreme Brahman. Directly visible in an eternal spiritual human form. Yeah, so same thing as it was told earlier in the shloka that these three types of people who deride the form of the Lord, they will not attain their respective desires. Okay, that's what we explained. Yes, Matri. There are many devotees who assume themselves to be in Krishna consciousness and uh, devotional service, but at heart do not accept the supreme personality of God at Krishna as the absolute truth. For them, the fruit of devotional service going back to Godhead will never be tested. Similarly, those who are engaged in fruitive, pious activities and who are ultimately hoping to be liberated from this material entanglement will never be successful, either because they derived the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. In other words, person who mock Krishna are to be understood to be demonic or atheistic. Yeah, basically, they are all considering Lord as an ordinary human being, like any other person. Okay, so they will not attain their respective results like that. Yeah, so here, please read from here, Mataji. With such a false conviction, they think that the body of any human being is now simply covered by material nature. And that as soon as one is liberated from this material body, there is no difference between God and himself. This attempt to become one with Krishna will be baffled because of delusion. Such a atheistic and demonic cultivation of spiritual knowledge is always fertile. That is the indication of this verse. So this is what Popa is conveying in this whole purport. Okay. So, what they have a false conviction it means what? Not based on Shastra. There is no Shastra where it mentions that Lord's form is ordinary. Everywhere in the Shastra, what is told? Satchitananda form. So, they have their own conception of the Lord. So, they think that the body of any human of any human being is now simply covered by metal nature. And that as soon as one is liberated from this metal body, there is no difference between God and himself. This is my word. That one will become one, one with the Lord. Okay. So they will not get the results of any of their activity. That's what is true. Okay. Yeah. So last part. Yes. Here. People jeer at Krishna because they are envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Mm -hmm. Their destiny is certainly to take birth after birth in the spaces of atheistic and demonic life. Perpetually, their real knowledge will remain under delusion. 
and uh, gradually they will regress to the darkest region of creation. Yeah, so that's what that is a uh, destination of my Adis. So they will go to the darkest region of creation. Why? Because they are envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Okay. So as it was told earlier also in the third verse, 9.3, that Ashraddha Dhana Purusha, so they, Ashraddha Dhana Purusha, they are envious and they will not attain their results. They will be baffled in their <coughs> endeavors. So their destiny is certainly to take birth after birth in the species of atheistic and demonic life. Okay. Like that. So next section will continue in the next class tomorrow about the pure devotees and Mahatmas. Okay. And questions also for this section we will take tomorrow. Shri Prabhupada ki jai, Shri Madhubhavad ki ta ki jai. Hare Krishna. Actually, there is one small thing. It's no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Actually, when I logged in my profile over the website of the DVRV, my email address has been wrongly mentioned there. My full, I mean, my name is Aruna, A-R-U-N-A. -A. So, in spite of Aruna, it has just written Arun and then the further part of the email. So, well, now I remember it, so I'll be uh, logging in using the same user ID, but Will you be using this email ID somewhere else also? If yes, then it is need to be corrected. Okay. So, Mathe, you can just put a WhatsApp message to the BVRV WhatsApp number that it has been mentioned wrongly. And what is the correct email ID you can mention? <laughs> and then they will correct it. Yeah. So, and then uh, you, have, you can log in with the new email ID then. It has to be corrected. Okay. So, my login ID again will be regenerated. That's what you're saying. The roll number will remain same, but the login ID will be login ID will be regenerated. Yeah, yeah, I think it has to be done. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know the details exactly, but that needs to be corrected because, yeah, that uh, email will be used for sending your marks or exam marks, whatever. All that will be going in that. Okay, Prabhuji. And BVRB WhatsApp number is our same for this Bhakti uh, Shastri Wala group, Prabhuji, or? Ah, yes, yes, from that, uh, whatever you may receive the message, no? yeah. yes, yes, same, yeah, same, same. Okay, uh, the open book text marks are given, are declared open book text. Uh, Mathe, you have to check in the website only, you will get the update in website. It is not uh, only shown when I checked last night, there are no marks or uh, open book assessment for none of the modules. Ishopanishad also and module one of Bhagavad Gita also. Is it? Okay. Uh, okay, I will check Madhuri. But as far as I know, at least Ishopanishad was corrected and it is updated. Okay, let me check. Okay. Next. Hare Krishna.